how did she go from this normal young lady? Uh, we gonna talk about a few things here. How did she go from being in science fairs and enjoying math and enjoying science and probably making A's and B's in schools to being this female sniper at the age of 14. Okay, so please excuse the profanity in this documentary, but I wanted to show real footage because we need to pray for Chicago. Chicago needs Jesus. We all need Jesus, but there is an extra principality of death and hate in, in the streets of Chicago, and we need to pray for our youth. So this is the real. People have been shot more than 400 killed. We're going to take you to Chicago where this past Chicago saw one of its most violent weekends of the year with uh, more than 60 people shot over the week and a third of them under the age of 17. Chicago faces an epidemic of gun violence. This year alone more than 2100 people have been shot, more than 400 killed. We're going to take you now to Chicago, where this past weekend at least 52 people were shot, eight of them killed in a wave of violence across the city. 13. With that shit, get that. There's a lot of ways to get cops. Mistaken identity. Anything, anything you ain't gotta do with this shit. This is kind of some white stands that kill up in this shit every day, man. So you gotta keep this up. Yeah, I, mean, I like to keep some big shit in case they try to trap me up with cookies there. Call Shaq Boy, let the back blow it. He's bobbing it. It's like Osama. Cray, cray, my young nigga. K, my young killer. A lot of niggas be rapping. But we want to see you. I'm from FTL, but I be posted on EDT, bitch. Boy, two can feel we shoot the kill, boy. This shit super real. Bell out on the way to drink a win. Watch sure this shit spill. She got super mad when I say it. I'm from 60 times, bitch. Jakaira Barnes, aka KI, was born on January 21st, 1997, in Chicago, Illinois, to her mother, Chantel Brown. Before she would even turn one year old, she would lose her father. He was shot in the head with an AK 47 in front of his home. Some people say it's because he was a gang leader in the city of Chicago, but K.I.'s mom said that that's not true. K.I. would witness one of her brothers being murdered in front of her when she was very young, and death would become a common theme in her life. She also had a brother by the name of George Barnes, a.k.a. G.I. Joe, and they were very close. Growing up, K.I. seemed to be a normal girl, she enjoyed hanging out with her friends. She had boyfriends and she was an honor roll student. She had dreams of becoming a social worker and helping out less fortunate kids. She attended Perspectives, IIT, Math and Science Academy. But in the middle of her ninth grade year, there was a change in KI. Her grades were slipping. She was having behavioral issues at school and she was spending a lot more time on the block. STL EBT. How? Wh where did that transition happen? Y'all thought this was just physical because she lost her dad, then she lost her brother, then she lost her, her cousin that was like a little brother to her, then she lost her friend that was in a gang set. And then it said that she stopped really like um, going to school. She started hanging out more. Like they said, her freshman year in high school, there was a change in her. She switched up. She started hanging on the block. And you know who I blame? Her mom. Because when you saw that she started hanging out more with them friends, you should say, get yourself in this house. It's time to go to Bible study. It's time to go to church. It's time to go, uh, it's time to do your homework. Get in here. We not, nope, you're not going to join no gang. But her mama didn't do that. Thank you. On August 10th, 2011, it was a celebration on STLEBT. It was Shondell Gregory's birthday. It was Tuka Day. FBG Duck will be filming his music video for his song Freestyle and a Tukaville family will be there. And after filming the video, their adrenaline was pumping and they felt like Tuka's birthday would be the perfect day for some get back. At 11.30 p.m., O.D. Perry would be walking near Parkway Gardens when he was ambushed and shot multiple times, including a shot to the neck, losing his life at 20 years old, the members of Wig City would mourn the loss of O.D. Perry, and they would rename the block in his honor. But they would also wonder who exactly was behind his death. 
many people were saying that it was top Tukaville shooter Marvell Williams, aka FBG Wooski. But thanks to a witness tip, the Chicago PD would already have its primary suspects, Jakira K.I. Barnes and her street mentor, Rodney Stewart, aka Boss Trail. But many people didn't want to believe that a 14 year old girl had taken a life of a respected Wick City member. O.D. Perry was known to carry a 357 Magnum, a gun he could be seen with in multiple pictures. But it said after shooting Odie, K.I. took that gun from him, and she could be seen on social media, posing with it as if it were a trophy. But by taking a life of O.D. Perry, K.I. would inadvertently create what would go on to become the most famous block in America, and they would call it O Block. Her mama just allowed her to go, and her mama even said, "I started, I started to realize that she's, she lost her soul." I looked in her eyes, and she was soulless. I know another quote said that her mom asked her to um, read a Bible verse, and she typed it. And as you can see, this Satan comes in so many ways to destroy us, to give us false identities. You see this young lady right here. And it shows her and a picture of her and her boyfriend. Clearly, she's dressing as a young lady right there. And then we see her now. And she done, not only she got a black heart, she done joined this gang or sold out to the gang. Now she done started killing, but now she's dressing like a boy. Now she's a dyke. Now Satan telling her, you're not beautiful. Everything just becomes dark around her. Now she's full of hate for this other set because they took out her best friend who died at 15. But he was in a gang too. He probably took out some young, young guys that was his age too. They just retaliated. So everybody doing the same thing. It's not like he was innocent. Both parties are wrong, but now you see this this young, beautiful young lady that's flourishing, got her whole future ahead of her, 14 years old, in math and science fairs, doing great in school. She, she's dating guys, you know, she's a regular young lady. All of a sudden, now the devil got her full of hate. Now she turned into an assassin. She done joined this gang. She want to get back everybody for taking her dad, her brother. Now she's dressing like a boy. Now she's a dyke. Now the devil telling her, you're not beautiful. No, everything is black. Everything is grim. Everything is not black and grim this is the city this is the part you live in but there's a whole nother world out out here besides the south side of chicago besides O block or 63rd street or m block there's a whole nother world there are other states that you can go in in the usa and live peacefully even as a black person there are other parts that you can go to and exist you don't have to just call we shoot all your block K.I. started to get the reputation of a shooter around the city, and her profile would rise even more when fellow Tukaville member King Little J, who was a very popular rapper during the rise of the Chicago Drill era and popular DJ academic series Warren Chirac, he would mention her in songs rapping about how she was a sh shooter and how she was putting a murder gang down in the streets. Some members of Tukaville called K.I. Little Snoop, as in Felicia Snoop Pearson, from the HBO television series, The Wire. Her demeanor reminded her gang of the character from the classic TV show. Are you contracting? Or work so I remember the few times I would watch this show and I remember I could not stand seeing her because she represented a lie to me. Like I just always saw her trying to be something she wasn't, which was a man. Look how pretty she is. Look how round her face is. Like she's gorgeous. And you could imagine she take a whole that out of her hair and curl it. She's a pretty short female. She has a beautiful round apple face. Like, she's gorgeous. I can see through this whole stud look. And it just represented a lie to me. Like, so many beautiful young ladies walking around being the Certain them that the enemy Chicago. has confused them with. One like, obviously, gangs, God made you a beautiful young woman. They're she's a short, pretty... Ten, like uh, she's a ten, she's gorgeous, and I saw that. And so every time I would see her trying to act other than what God made her, town. it would upset me because it was like you lying, and it was like she was always trying so hard. Like girl, bye, you're gorgeous. God don't make mistakes. You're clean. But this is just one of many stories of high-powered weapons meant for the battlefields of Afghanistan or Iraq, making their way to the inner-city community in the hands of young kids and teenagers waging war on one another. And death 
would once again come to take somebody close to K.I. A 13-year-old boy by the name of Taekwon Tyler. It said that him and K.I. was cousins, but he was more like a little brother to her. They were very close, and they would spend a lot of time together. Even though his mom moved him out of Chicago to a small town in Illinois to get away from all of the violence, but he would often come back to visit. He wanted to attend a house party that was being held on the 6200 block of South Rhodes Avenue. Initially, his mom didn't want him to go. She had a bad feeling about it, but he kept asking and begging about going to this party. He wanted to go with K.I. And eventually, his mom agreed that he could go. Under what is a 13-year-old doing at a house party? He has no business at their party. He's 13. Yeah, like This is what I'm saying is the mother's fault for the having these kids up, and young teens engage the in these ended, adult the activities. Leave, it doesn't make any sense. A fight broke out amongst a group of men, and gunshots rang out. One of those bullets striking 13-year-old Taekwon Tyler in the chest. His mom was already there to pick him up from the party. But what she found was her son bleeding out on the sidewalk. She held him in her arms as he took his last breath, and K.I. was there to witness the whole thing, her little brother being murdered right in front of her. It said that the fight that broke out at the party had nothing to do with Taekwon, and he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. There's also a theory that K.I. had begun to train Taekwon on gunplay and how to rob and she would send them to rob older drug dealers. And that's what happened. One of those dealers got mad, doubled back, and killed a young Taekwon. A man named Nashawn Flowers would be arrested for his murder, and he would ultimately be convicted and sentenced to 55 years in prison. After Taekwon's death, K.I. was truly heartbroken, but she vowed to make the streets bleed in his name. She would change her social media handle to Taekwon Assassin and she would create a subset of STLEBT. Taekwon World comprised of some of the youngest members of the gang, people like TB and Poppy, Richie Jerk, and 0078, who's probably most well known for allegedly killing one of the most feared shooters in Chicago gangland history, 051 Melly. Taekwon World would quickly grow a reputation for dropping bodies. K.I. would instruct her youngins to slide on certain neighborhoods that they were beefing with while she would go after bigger targets. 800 T E Y I M B, 300 and Lamron, and especially O Block, anybody in war going on. And in K.I.'s mind, she was a soldier. But in war, there are casualties. And Tukaville would lose another member. Who exists? You don't have to be killing other black people. You can live happily ever world. after. She could have went to college. She could have been a doctor, a lawyer. The vice versa, these other gang members. They be. And on September 25th, 2012, a fight would take place on the train that would forever tie K.I. to one of her biggest rivals, Davon Bennett, a.k.a. King Von. They started to fight as soon as they seen each other on the train. King Von would punch K.I. in the face multiple times. Then he would take to Twitter to let everybody know what he did to her. K.I. would acknowledge what happened, but says she only has a bruise on her face. But it's all good because her 40 cow could leave a hole in King Von's face. And a few days later, K.I. would tweet directly at King Von to let him know that she had just beat up a member of O Block on the train. One of Von's friends named Little Scud, King Von would acknowledge these tweets by saying that K.I. wasn't no lame and how he think he's in love with him. And K.I. would diss King Von in response, but that didn't faze him. He told K.I. that he wanted to wife her up and how he would treat her right. And on October 5th, 2012, King Von would begin a direct message K.I. telling her how much he liked her and how much he wanted to get with her. At first, K.I. would reject his advances, but Von would stay persistent. And eventually, she started to open up to him. She even asked him about a rumor that she heard that old Block wanted her dead and that she was a top priority. King Von would tell her, 
yeah, there are people in Oblock that want you dead, but I don't think I could pull the trigger. He said that he liked her too much. He told her that he had a gun on him when she seen him on the train. And there was another time that they ran into each other and King Von was strapped. So if he really wanted to get Might there, be a bit of a stretch, but what if they would have fallen in love and allowed Jesus Christ to save time, them? And they could have been husband and wife and God could have used them to bring the peace between the two Von, games. It's a stretch, gang but that's how God works. If KI would have humbled herself and just be more girly like, right? And just let God in and go to church and King Von too, they could have got saved and they could have brought peace to both of them. One thing that K.I. and King Von could agree on is that they both felt that they would die in the streets in the Chicago gang wars. But even though they would have moments of being cordial and somewhat respectful to one another, they were still enemies and dissing. This is sad because not right. only did she end up dying in that lifestyle, but he ended up killing his wife, according to speculations. And they could have found Jesus, got married, and brought peace to the Middle East and Chicago. Brought peace to the gangs and turned peace. Like, I, don't, I can't see myself as nothing else. You could have been a model, an actor, a preacher, a minister, a gospel rap. There's, you could have been everything else but that. But the devil will come in and say, you ain't got nothing else to do. When you this young, beautiful, young person with all this talent, all this potential. But the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what he did with this young lady. And turned her into, I guess, feed, uh, Chicago's youngest assassin. And all of a sudden, he filled her heart with hatred and blackness. And she thought the enemy was old block, but the enemy was the devil. Because the enemy don't care if you live on old block, M block, or what street you live on. He coming for every soul. He don't even care what color you are. But he, it's so, it, he got it so good with black folks that he don't have to use nobody to kill us. We're going to kill each other. I won't say we're going to kill each other, but we're killing each other. So the devil had her thinking that it was that set and that she couldn't have peace. And here's how the devil fools people. They lose a family member or a gang member that they love. And the devil got them thinking, oh, the way you can get back at them is by killing one of them. That's not going to bring that life back. You're never going to see them ever again. They still gone. They still dead. They in hell. They burning as a matter for you. That's not going to bring them back. You killing them. All it is is it's going to lead you because they're going to retaliate and end up killing you. Now you're going to be down there with your dead homie cousin gang member. Now you're going to be in that same torture when your gang member, dead homie, or cousin, or friend want to tell you, give your life to Jesus. They be making fun of me because I be living holy. But if you knew like I know, hell ain't nothing to play with. Give your life to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give your life to Jesus. They be making fun of me because I be living holy. But if they knew like I know, hell ain't nothing to play with. Give your life to Jesus, give, 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 give your life to Jesus. They sitting up here creating hell on earth in these gangs in Chicago. They call it Chirac because it's worse than Iraq. These young folks killing each other like soldiers over in, in Iraq and in America. Worse than that, just shooting each other up, shooting blocks up, shooting innocent children or innocent babies. That young lady named K.I. could have been anything great. She could have been a lawyer, a teacher, a science teacher. It even, and this is what baffles me. It said in that documentary, whoever did that documentary did a good job. He said that um, she went from wanting to be somebody to create change for the youth in the inner cities of Chicago to being the youngest assassin in Chicago. The devil took somebody so full of potential, somebody that God could have used this young lady. And you see the picture of her. She was bright. She was looking cute. She had her little boyfriend or whatever. And then he flipped it and the devil just, you know, got her dressing as a dyke. Now she hating. Now she killing. You know, say so she got hate in her heart. She got a black heart. He just, he will take your identity and totally flip it. He got her thinking she ugly. She was beautiful. I can't say enough. A lot of black girls think because they got old, big old lips that we ugly and that we got to be dyking out here because we look, think you, your hair short and you got big lips. So we think we not. We think we look better as a boy. God don't make mistakes. Just because you got big old lips don't mean you a Jay-Z out here. Just because we got short, I got short hair and I got big lips. The devil tried to turn me into a dyke too because I was going that way. I was on my TLC and Aaliyah stuff. I was on my way. I used to wear baggy pants in my, uh, what was in my junior year in high school until God got my attention and I heard him and I listened. 
If I wouldn't have listened, I would have went that way. So I know what the devil be doing with black young ladies. He be making us think we're not beautiful enough. He'll use rape. He'll use molestation to turn us out and got us acting like the opposite sex. But not just that with K.I. She got hate. She had turned from wanting to help the inner kids like herself. She would have been helping old block. She would have been helping the 63rd, the GDB or whatever. She would have been helping everybody. And God knew that. That was her future. She wanted to help her people. See, God know what you could do, but the devil, her mama couldn't understand that it was a spiritual or she didn't understand that she needed to take her daughter to church that that was not just hate coming into chaos heart that was a spirit that was a demon that possessed that young lady and it filled her with hate and murder and she wanted to get revenge because she was hurting because everybody was dead but that's no excuse to start killing people because now you finna be dead in hell with them with your enemies and with your friends and they your friends or whoever they would even your enemies would tell you it ain't worth it we were stupid we was in the same block we both black and we killing each other for what I just want to say, y'all, that the enemy will flip who we are in Christ. K.I. had a bright future. She was a smart young lady. She was doing well. All of a sudden, the devil took a young teenage girl in the streets of Chicago and turned her into an assassin, gave her a black heart, filled her with evil. Her mama should have took her to church. She said that her mama said that she saw, she looked in her eyes and she lost her soul because you wasn't looking at your daughter. She was looking at a demon. So we forget that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not physical. They are spiritual. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of God, spiritual wickedness in high places. You need the Holy Spirit else you won't see it. See, if you have a praying mama or a praying grandmama, that's why some gang members are still here that don't deserve to be here. They should be dead or in prison because they had a praying mama or a praying grandmama. And the Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. But when you don't have the Holy Spirit, and I'm not saying that they're any better than anybody else, but something about the prayers of the righteous, God will have mercy even when we don't deserve it. When we have somebody that's interceding for us. These young folks don't know Jesus. Their parents aren't saved. They don't have the Holy Spirit. Nobody's interceding. So they become a victim to the devil's will for their life. And that's outside of God's will. But ain't nobody seeking Jesus. She even typed. K.I. typed. My mama told me to read a Bible verse. And then she was saying how she couldn't sleep because of the stuff she was doing. Her mama should have took her to a church. And I'm not talking about one of these religious churches or one of these mega churches, but to one of them Holy Ghost field churches. They would that somebody, one of them mothers or pastors would have had the Holy Ghost laid hands on K.I. And she would have got converted at the altar. That demon of death and murder would have came out of her. And she could have been an example. Hey, I was in a gang. I did this, but God saved me. The devil wanted to kill me. That girl ended up losing her life at 17. And that story is so deep, I ain't even going all the way over there. I'm going to just tell everybody to repent. I'm just I'm just speaking off documentaries I've watched on Chicago. And it just baffled me that this young lady with a whole future that wanted to be a science teacher, a math teacher that enjoyed it. And she wanted to give back. She wanted to help inner city kids. Like she wasn't even on that gang stuff. Then all of a sudden she started losing her friend and all that. Then she went to that gang life. Then the devil gave her a black heart. Now she dressing like a boy. Now she doing, now she got hate in her. When she could have been this beautiful woman of God, this beautiful woman, the mayor of Chicago. But instead, God gave her a satanic rep, the youngest assassin in Chicago. They probably still rep her in the squad. They probably, you see what I'm saying? She, if you see how the devil made her somebody dope or bad in these streets, that everybody's going to remember K.I., the youngest assassin in Chicago, how she started killing at 14. I think she died at 17. But, you know, they feared her because she was putting in the devil's word. But if she did that for the devil, imagine her future and what she would have did for Christ. If she wouldn't have went over to the gang, like if her mama, I hate to say it, would have put her in church, would have introduced her more to Jesus. Because just tell them to read a Bible verse, but not telling them to get out them streets. And it's 10, 12 at night, and you 14 and 15, you ain't doing your job as a parent. So at the same time, the blood is on the mama's hand and the pen. Not just for her, but a lot of these gang members, because these parents and these mamas ain't parents. And regardless if your daddy gone or not, I didn't have no daddy growing up. My mama raised me all by herself, a single black mother. But it wasn't all by herself, because she had Jesus. But that's the difference. She had the Holy Spirit, so she had wisdom. But um, my mama just old school. Some people not saved, but they still going to be a parent. Like, no, you need to get in this house. I don't want you dying. I don't want you in them streets. I don't want you in the gang. You know what I'm saying? Some people just old school like that. Even if they're not saved, saved like that, they still fear God. Like, they got the basics. But my mama had the Holy Spirit. So, it said if it was me in Chicago and it was my mother because she was saved, she'd be like, you're not finna be in them streets. I don't care if you lost your dad, your this, your that. You finna go to church. Oh, you got a demon in you now? Oh, you got some hate in you now? We finna take you to the altar. We finna pray all night till this demon come up out. I'm about to, my mama was laying oil on my bed in Dallas because I had a demon of lust. 
And she even said she saw she saw a demon or heard a demon. She said, you invited a demon in my house. She was anointing my pillow, anointing the bed. So if it was my mom in Chicago, she had too much Holy Ghost power to let me be a victim of them streets. She would have been out there talking to the gang members because she had Holy Ghost power. If she wasn't about that life at all, but she would have told them, hey, this ain't what God wants you to be doing. She would have been like, I'm taking her to the altar. If I would have been gay, if I would have been this, I had a cousin ask my mom, what would you do if she was gay? She was like, I still love her, but I would take her to the altar. She said, I'd take her to the altar because you have to be delivered. And this is not just about that. This is about when the devil comes to steal your identity. You could be just a fornicator. You could be just 14 having sex. That's still wrong. But my point is the devil is taking these young kids in Chicago with these bright futures. They don't even know who they are in Christ. They don't even know how great they they can be they can be the next mayor the next president the next judge the next lawyer the next doctor they don't know because all they see is the streets and somehow them ogs and them gang members are telling them to die for the block and be on the t-shirt is everything for the block to be named after you for killing your own young black brothers and sisters that won't even get to see 18 that won't even get to go to college that won't even get to graduate high school you crippling young men from going to be play football and basketball they telling them that's everything that's a lie from the pits of hell and I'm sick, y'all. I'm sick of just talking about it. I really want to help the streets of Chicago. That's what I'm on right now. It's, it's, I can't believe that I went my whole life living a blessed life with my mama growing up. I didn't start going through till I got old. Now, I've been going through as a reject since I was about 12 up, you know, being rejected and all that. But as far as I grew up with a single mom, but I was blessed. We traveled. We went to Hawaii. I done went to been on three cruises, Hawaii, Jamaica, you name it. I've been there all before I was like 20, 21. And this is by a single black mom. But because she had the Holy Spirit and she worked, she got out the hood. My grandma and them lived in, in, in Cedar Glen South Apartments. My grandma and them lived in the ghetto on Section 8. <clears throat> but my mama wanted to get out. That wasn't her mentality. She got out. And we wasn't in the suburbs, but we were middle class. But she worked. She taught me to work. She said my mom and my baby brother, they sit around waiting for people to get them hands out. She said, but I've been working since I was 15. She always was different. She didn't want nobody to give her nothing. She didn't want to stay in the ghetto. She didn't want the generational curses being on Section 8, staying on food stamps. That's supposed to help you temporarily. You ain't supposed to stay on it. You're supposed to better yourself. Ah, uh, dang, man, I forgot what I was going to say. You have to want to get out. You have to want to better. If you've been in Chicago and they've been in Chicago and you done seen your grandma die, your daddy die, your baby daddy die, and you still got your kid in this neighborhood, you still haven't left, you don't have to be rich to legally have $30 in your pocket. I'm moving to Dallas. I'm moving to Boston. I'm starting over. I'm starting over. If it's if if I remember correctly, I remember my mama telling me that my cousins left uh, California because it was so bad back in the day that they was going they didn't want them to join a the gang, so they moved to Boston. And I know gangs can be everywhere, but some places are worse. The demonic spirits are worse. So I'm saying all that to say, y'all, we need to pray for Chicago, and we don't need to just pray. the 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 the, the people that are saved in Chicago, yes, the people that are saved in Chicago, the churches, you need to step up and go to the hoods. You need to have a Jesus day, a go to college day, a join the army day, a join the air force day, a stop killing each other day, a let's wake up day, a let's stop going to hell. Y'all too young to be killing yourselves and go to hell. Do y'all realize that once you kill each other, you finna be in hell forever at 14, 15. You need to do something. If they're not scared to be having these kids teaching them to kill each other just to get their name on a t-shirt and name the hood after them, you need to tell them about Jesus Christ, that he came that they might have life. When I was thinking about Chicago this morning, and I was thinking about how bad it is, I was like, man, this is like, a, they living in a movie constantly. These gangster movies we, 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 be, we be watching, or I used to watch, they living in it constantly. And I'm like, I'm over here living in this nice little world, this peachy world, like, I, you know what I'm saying? And I go, we go through things, but it's nothing like Chicago. You know, if you're not from Chicago and you grew up middle class, just middle class, you know, even if you grew up in the hood or the ghetto somewhere else, you can grow up in Dallas and different, ain't nothing compared to the streets of Chicago. It's a difference. They dying in them streets, like rapid. They, they actually having war on each other. This is demonic warfare. So I say all that to say, when I was thinking about how bad Chicago was and the youth dying and going to hell and just the cycles of violence, 
is that scripture from the word came in my head that Jesus came that we might have life and more abundantly. And that's what these kids that are being victims to these gangs and the OGs and their cousins and all that is drafting them in. That's the, the, what they don't know, that life and more abundantly. Jesus came that they might have life and life more abundantly. He don't want them to be in the streets killing each other, but they don't know that because ain't nobody taking them to church. Ain't nobody telling them about Jesus, telling them to get out the hood, telling them to stop killing themselves to go get a job. You know, even growing up in that I, I, my first job was at uh, Six Flags, then at the movie theater. But I don't know if they have these things in Chicago. And these, these, these. So they turn to violence. They turn to killing people to get money. They turn to being uh, assassins at a young age to get five and ten thousand dollars. But you notice they get this this money and they steal in the hood. And then they find you two days later and shoot you up after you done got your little five ten thousand dollars. So there's no wisdom. There's no teaching there. Nobody's taking time to educate them on what it what it means to be a Christian or to know Jesus or to love your black sisters and brothers or to black entrepreneurship to come together with your sisters and nobody's teaching them they're only teaching them to fight them because they live one block over from you they in the same hood they going through the same problems they you probably would be like I said you'd be best friends if you knew them but because they one block over they in the black disciples and you the gangster disciples you're supposed to kill and shoot their blanking brains out and then when you die you gonna get that like you gonna get that respect you deserve we're gonna put you on a t-shirt and name the block after you and we're gonna create a a, a a ZJ day and everybody gonna get popcorn and ribs and we gonna celebrate your life because you took other black lives but that's something to celebrate and you was only 15 16 17 but you want to celebrate that that's that's that my people perish for lack of knowledge. Chicago needs Jesus. They need to infiltrate the inner cities with jobs for the youth, with job corps, just like they do for Dallas. It's supposed to be everywhere, but I'm thinking they don't have it because these kids wouldn't be killing each other. Because where there's no opportunity, all you see is violence. So if there's opportunity, y'all need to bring more. Y'all need to take the Army and the Air Force more into the schools of Chicago. A lot of them start off okay, but by the time they get to ninth and 10th, they drop out. That's common everywhere in all the black neighborhoods. Y'all need to really be getting them in 7th and 8th grade. Telling them then not to drop out when you get to ninth grade, not to join a gang. Because a lot of them be okay as kids. It be when they hit like high school or junior high that they join gangs. Some of them join it younger than that, but most of them be a little older. So you need to catch them while they're young. It's the reason why the Lord says raise your kids up in the ways of the Lord. And when they get older, they, they won't depart. I tell y'all all the time that I'm I'm like this because my mama raised me up in the, to know the word, to know the Lord for myself. And I seen her. She was full of the Holy Spirit, but she had wisdom. She was That's because she had the Holy spirit but everybody don't have a mama like they have these mamas walking around with no clothes on cussing people out you're not gonna know unless you talk that's what's gonna be normal to you because you're not taught and they just be like yeah god is good they just religious but they on their way to hell but their kids don't know because that's all they talk that that hood stuff that ghetto stuff they don't know that you got to turn from sin that a woman should dress modest that a woman's not a b word not a h word that stops calling stuff a b that a man is not an n word you know what i see so much online because I like to watch YouTube all day um, and I need to be doing more. But um, what I see online is that a lot of my generation and Generation Z th thinks that a black man is an N-word or thinks that a man is an N-word. You know, I seen this one guy. He, he was a man. He was dressed as a woman trying to fight this famous celebrity. And the celebrity was like, why these blank men trying to fight me? She was like, you are in. You, you an N, I'm not an N, go fight an N. What she was saying is, you a man, go fight a man, I'm a woman. And he was like, no, I'm a B word. Like, he was trying to say he's a female. So now we're replacing woman with the, the, with the B word. Y'all know what I'm saying. And let me tell you something. We are not bees, we are women. And then now we call him men in words, especially the black people, instead of saying that young man or that man or my brother, my homie, whatever, you replace it with the N word. That's something that we was deemed as um, by Caucasian people when they brought us over here. So why are we embracing that? Anybody can be that because it's an ignorant person. But why are we embracing something they put on us? That's not who we are. And if we are, God can change us because if we are ignorant, God can give us the wisdom and knowledge. He can teach us. But we shouldn't just be calling men, replacing men with the n-word uh, that's what the youth is doing because of lack of knowledge and that's ignorance i'm not an n why you want to fight me you need to go fight somebody go fight an n what she's saying is go fight a man but she replacing it with an n so instead of being a man he's an n-word no men are not n-words they're men an n-word is an ignorant person stop replacing yourself yourself with a definition that is not you that is less than you women are not bees words i watched this clip from tupac the other day and when he was younger he said he would never disrespect woman woman or this and then they showed the clip and 
him years later and he was like we don't love them h's b's don't get no respect and then people in the comments was going to bat for tupac they was like yeah he right well people don't understand that bees and women are two different things they don't understand that a bee and a woman are two different things. If she's a bee, she's not a woman. And I would say, where you get that lie from hell from? Because when God created her a female, she's still a queen. Whether she's acting like a whore or dressing like one. And she may be loose. That doesn't mean it's right for you to call her out her name. Because God didn't create no B words. He created He created them male or female. The B word wasn't in that. The H word wasn't in that. And just because she walking around with no clothes on and sleeping with the whole block does not give you the right to call her or anything less than what God made her. And that's woman, female, queen. He took her from the rib of Adam just because she's lost and she's the prodigal daughter and she doesn't know Christ like she should and she hasn't found her identity in Christ doesn't mean that you, just because you're Tupac or somebody from the street, can call her out her name because you're saying, no, she's not a woman, she's a bee. No, she is not anything less than what God made her. Even if she's acting like less than what she should, she is still what God made her and he's going to hold you accountable. The Bible says that the young man will be held accountable to him for every word that he says and he says if you speak curses those curses are going to come back to you so you should repent just because you see your favorite rappers and and nikki and beyonce calling each other bad b's and h's and we don't love them that doesn't mean that's what we are that's all stuff from hell that's hell slang hood slang ghetto slang but it's some stems from hell because of lack of knowledge we degrade ourselves and then we create and we think these theories are true that the, that a bee and a woman are not two different things that if she's a bee she's not a woman she's still a woman she does she not is she not still a woman genetically she's a woman so regardless of how she acts what do you think god calls her even if he says depart from me not, he ain't going to call out her name. He don't say depart from me not, but he sees her as his daughter. She may be the prodigal daughter, but he still sees her as a queen, as a daughter. Did he come up to roll up on Mary Magdalene to my B? We don't love them H's. Did he do that to Mary Magdalene? Mary Magdalene was a, a loose female. She was sleeping with everybody. They was talking about her when she came in to play. Like what that blank doing here? And Jesus said, where much is forgiven, they will love me more. To whom are they going to love me more? To those I forgive less or those I forgive more? And they backed up off of her then. He said, to this day, I'm going to remember her. And he delivered her from seven demons. And she was a loose female. Jesus didn't call her out her name. Just because Tupac said, oh, no, bees and women are different because she sleep with everybody. She's a bee. She's not a woman. Who are you? You're not God. Who are you to define what's a woman and what's not a woman because of her actions? Because she was raped or molested or because somebody broke her heart and it turned her out. It turned her into a prostitute. Who are you to call her anything less than what God made her? Because God sees the real us. Ain't it that that's your favorite song by Marvin said he saw the best in me when everybody else saw the worst. So then if he saw the best in you when everybody else sees the worst or what you do instead of who you truly are, your identity in Christ, who are you to tell somebody they are less than what God made them? But this is what us black people do because our favorite rapper or somebody do it because the hood tells us or the ghetto tells us or, or culture, rap music tells us it's okay. Jesus didn't roll up on her calling her out her name. He forgave her and delivered her. So who are we to call anybody less than what we are? We need to pray for the streets of Chicago. We need to pray that kingdom triumphs over culture and for the youth to come to Christ in Chicago and everywhere else. And I need I need pastors and gospel celebrities to get back right with God. And we need to pray that God raises up gospel rappers and gospel singers and gospel actors and people from Chicago and different hoods to be bold and to be Holy Ghost filled and to stand on holiness and to have a holy boldness to go in here to the hoods and, and to the gang members and talk to them and have such charisma and so filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit that these young folks listen to them. Because they got to see, even though you say they got to see you some kind of way that's like different or cool for them to still listen. And you might not be on that G stuff where they think it's G for killing people. You don't have to be on that for them to listen. They can see something different about you. They'll still listen because at the end of the day, they know they wrong. They just caught up in that lifestyle. So we need to pray for Chicago. We need to pray for everybody. Um Y'all, I'm just tired of us talking and I just cannot believe that this whole time I've been living a, this peachy little life and it's because i had christ and my mama was saved and so it shielded me from a lot but i lived this blessed life and i didn't know that people my age were getting killed in chicago and they're still doing it and we just sitting around having church eating biscuits and nobody's helping the streets of chicago the black youth that are killing each other it's a war zone going right on in it right here in the usa and nobody's doing anything these bishops these pastors these gospel singers nobody's talking about chicago 
How can you be having a war, a genocide going on with black kids and teenagers and youth killing each other and ain't nobody talking about it? All y'all gifted singers and pastors and preachers and ain't nobody talking about it. Ain't nobody doing nothing about it. Ain't nobody speaking on it. That's got to change. And it's got to be not just talking and doing, but going in there and making a difference, creating programs, drafting them to the Army or the Air Force or to be something in job corporate. Like it's something that needs to be done because talking ain't enough. We need to start with humbling ourselves, praying and then doing. There needs to be a change, like a White House change to help the streets of Chicago. There needs to be army dictating these streets to save these babies from dying. Ain't nobody talking about it. Do y'all, do we, I didn't even know, like I would hear it, I would hear it, I, even growing up, I would hear my mama say her co-workers had to leave Chicago, it was so bad, but I didn't see nothing, I didn't know, because I was just over here, my church girl life, you know, being just a reject, but I had no idea that kids my age was dying, you know, I would hear, but I, like, I didn't see it like that until I'm seeing it now at 31, and I'm watching these documentaries, I'm like, this is really crazy, this is really, they living in hell, this is a, literally a hell on earth. It's not like that. It's not anything compared to the real hell, but this is a form of hell on earth. And ain't nobody teaching them. Ain't nobody showing them love. They don't have an Evette Bridges to listen to. They don't have a Bishop Murray to listen to. Any real man or woman of God that had wisdom, like the mamas or grandmama that y'all had that was saved, that brought y'all out the streets, that led y'all, they don't have that. So when you don't have that, it leads you to be a victim to the streets, to Satan, to gang violence, to being, uh, you know, all types of stuff in the streets, prostituting, say everything, man. So we need to pray. That's it, y'all. I'm I'm just on one right now. Like this got to be changed for Chicago, and I'm gonna go all out. I'm going all out. Like it's, it's something has to be done, and I'm I'm I, something needs to be done. It's got to be done because I'm I I can't believe this. I, something's got to be done. I can't believe this is happening, and I got to do something about this. Something.